Welcome. In this session, we will demonstrate how to create a geometry in the uh, Virtual Extrusion Laboratory 2D FEM module by importing a DXF file. And of course, before we can import a DXF file, we have to uh, prepare that file. And we do so in a CAD program. So here I have Rhinoceros, and I've uh, prepared a geometry of a set of die lips. Uh, these can be the die lips on the end of a blown film line or a blown film die or perhaps on a blown molding die or going downwards or even on a pipe die um, extruding uh, some pipe or tubing. Um, we'll consider them here as a blown film die. And you see the orientation here I have is in the um, where's the set up here. We have here in the ZX orientation that's a direction being the extrusion direction. Now when we have the geometry here we, we really we don't need any of these solids we can just hide this we can hide the internal mandrel. What we need is the flow field and so when you create when you get a geometry and you want to analyze it you need to create um, your your flow field geometry and then make a cut through the flow field to get your cross section of your flow field, your axisymmetric flow field. So if I hide this, you'll see our cut right here, and we can see it in the different views. Of course, uh, we don't see it in, the, in these views here. Now, um, one of the things about the software is that the geometry has to be imported in an XY coordinate system. So X, so this axisymmetric geometry, X would be R and Y would be Z. And so this is not in the right orientation. We have to select this geometry here and go transform, rotate, and I'll just rotate it around the axis here, down. And so now here it is in the XY uh, coordinate system where X is the R direction and Y is the Z direction. Once we have it in this orientation, then we can, um, first we should check our geometry dimensions, so uh, analyze uh, length, so I'll just check the length of that line, um, sorry, I've got analyze distance here, and that's 60 thou, and we want to make sure that that's 60 thou when we bring that into the virtual extrusion laboratory software. So we select this and we go file, export selected, and we give it a name, say die lips, and we'll uh, select the DXF format and we'll click Save. Now the DXF format has a bunch of flavors or options and we found that uh, one of the best ones to use for our software is to break it up into lines and arcs, R12 lines and arcs. So I select this option, click OK, then I can minimize this program and now I can see that in the folder here under VEL67 to DFM, I have a DXF file, dilips, um, that DXF is a small file that has that geometry. Now I go into my um, virtual extrusion laboratory, geometry data tab, and click the import DXF button. And I'm directed to that folder already. I can see here, here's the dilips DXF file. I click open. And the, um, the, if everything is done right, everything will open up here uh, smoothly with no error, but an error message can pop up saying you have overlapping lines or nodes that are too close. Um, if anything like that pops up, it's usually a problem with the geometry in the CAD file. You have to go back and clean it up so that you don't have the overlapping lines or you don't have any any uh, nodes that, that are too close or edges of lines that haven't properly connected or are crossing. Um, so you have to have really clean geometry. The only other thing you might want to do here is adjust the approximation of the curves. So for example, if I put a value of 4 there, you'll see that I don't have enough elements or nodes to define those curves and I will lose that detail when I bring it into the virtual extrusion laboratory. So if I want to be able to capture the curves, I need to specify enough nodes there's eight, that gives me a little bit more, not enough, I think, on the arc. So I'm going to go up back up to 16. 
Okay, so now I have enough nodes on those arcs to um, to capture them properly. Now I can click save. Do you want to merge all the adjacent boundaries? I'll say yes, and then click um, die clips. Save that and then close. And now your die lips have been imported here, but it has an X on it because it's not ready to be used in a project. We don't have a grid, we don't have boundary conditions. So we're going to go in there and apply those. So um, here we take our boundary, we go select, and you see it's one big boundary. So we want to split out our inlet and our outlet. So we go boundary, split, and we split that node and that node, and we zoom in here, and we split this node and this node. So now you can see from the side here, we have number of boundaries is four. And now we can go boundary, select, we'll select this one and this one, and those two are walls, boundary type, wall at 400 degrees. And then we'll go boundary, select, on the outside here, boundary type, that's going to be an output. Okay. Now the output has to be perfectly straight in either the uh, uh, parallel to the x-axis or y-axis. It can't be on an angle, so it has to be perfectly straight. And then same for the inlet, boundary, uh, select and select here, boundary type, and here we're going to specify Input mass flow rate, 200 pounds per hour, and 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and click OK. So now, to create our mesh, we simply click the grid icon, and we click OK. And now you can see that there is a bunch of triangles created, essentially randomly, but um, there seems to be enough across the gap. We need to have at least three nodes um, across a gap. One, two, three, or maybe it's a little bit light. Some cases we have three, some cases we have four. Um, but uh, let's see let's see what this does for us in terms of giving us a solution. So we go File, Save, and File, Exit. So in the next session, we will use this geometry to create a new project and then perform a simulation and analyze those results. Thank you.